we start lacing it with bits of the truth, then we're preparing everybody. Preparing everybody <laughs> for what? For what? <laughs> what is going on here? Where is Hollywood really getting their messages from? Find out on this episode of LED Live. Thank you for joining another LED Live. We're gonna talk about some amazing stuff today. But before we get into it, I wanna thank our Patreons because they help us do these things and bring out the light that is found in the Word of God, showing you what's going on in society that's dangerous. Now, uh, also, we wanna ask that you uh, take a look at our t-shirt website. What is our t-shirt website? Lightwear.shop. <laughs> Lightwear.shop. Go there, if you find something interesting, go ahead and buy it, it helps us out, and you get something too. Today, we're talking about agents in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, it looks like something we've covered in the past here, but what we found was something remarkable that came out from Australia. Mm. Australia, so Australia has like three different news organizations and one of them, the top one, came out with a documentary that talks about exactly how Hollywood is receiving its information. Mm. But before we go on, go ahead. So wait a minute, you mean, I mean, I thought everybody in Hollywood had agents. <laughs> yeah, everyone right. does, but these are spiritual agents as oh, we're okay. gonna find out here wow. pretty soon. This is, uh, and it doesn't really hash that out until about halfway through, but you're gonna, okay. you're gonna see this. This is, this is just remarkable, the, the characteristics that are gonna happen here. Now, the Bible says that we need to guard ourselves against these deceptions. Check this out. Matthew 24, three through four says, Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when these, will these things, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? and of the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. It's mm. interesting to me that the first words out of Christ's mouth is don't be deceived. Yeah. As if he knew that the, the way the, the, the deceiver, as Satan is called, uh, plans his, his uh, reckless plan is that he uses deception. And because uh, that's how he did it in the Garden of Eden, too. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, Jesus not just answering the, the question directly is very kind of interesting. Like they're asking, like, what's going to be this sign? Well, he's actually letting you know that one of the signs is the deception. deception. When you see the deceptions, yeah. that's also a sign. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, it is pretty interesting that that's, that's what he remarks. Rather than going, oh, it'll be this and this and this. When you see these things, then, then this will happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 1 Tim Timothy 4, 1 says, Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. I think that's fascinating because it's almost as if these spirits and demons will be in a physical form. Now I, I say that for a reason because what we're going to find out next is Truly, truly fascinating. Mm. So you ready for this? Mm. This is a documentary that was put together by Seven News Australia. And uh, they, they're hashing out some things that have been coming out into uh, the US market of things. And they're, they're putting pieces together, but they don't have all the truth because they don't have the biblical foundation. But they, so they, they, they think that our government is doing something behind the scenes. Now, this isn't a conspiracy. I, I, I say those things and you think, oh, it's going into conspiracies now. Well, wait a second. The, remember, this is mainstream media, Australia, from well-known uh, um, documentary makers, uh, news anchors, and uh, interviewing a, a well-known Hollywood producer. You ever remember uh, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman? Oh, yeah. yeah. This is the guy, and these two guys that they're going to be interviewing are the guys that made that show. Oh, interesting. So, uh, and along with a number of others. So, check this out. This, this is the three major mm. news organizations in Sydney, Australia. They have News 9, News 7, and News 10. You can see the, uh, this is the, the total um, network shares that each one of these things have. And uh, total people, percentage-wise, is split pretty much in thirds, but News 7 is the top one. You'll see when I play the clips from this documentary, bottom right corner will be News 7. So this is a legitimate 
documentary from their mainstream media. I think that's fascinating. So Bryce, there is a story that you have been personally involved in that I find absolutely fascinating. And it goes to the whole mythology that over the years, the US defense and intelligence community has tried to influence what Hollywood puts out. Now, just to explain to our audience, mm. you are a very accomplished Hollywood producer and screenwriter in your own right. You're actually the former chairman of the Emmy Awards. Mm. Um, you've written multiple award-winning movies. What happened to you and your colleague, Brent Friedman, when you were doing the launch party for your oh. Dark Skies series? Just give us a bit of an introduction. We're going to run a, a, a bit of an interview from Brent Friedman, your colleague, but just tell sure. our audience what the context was for what Brent's about to tell us. So this this is really interesting. We're gonna find out who this guy is, the guy on the right, Los An he's in Los Angeles, the other guy's in Sydney. He's the news anchor on the left here, and, and uh, the guy, the producer, is in Hollywood right now. But he's had an experience that that uh, the guy on the right wants to, or guy on the left wants to uh, talk about. So let's look into who is Bryce Zabel. He is the guy in Los Angeles right now, and it says that um, I looked him up on IMDb, and this is what it says about him. He's a, he was a CNN, CNN correspondent turned screenwriter, and has been the creator and showrunner for the primetime series, written, produced films, run uh, the uh, TV Academy, created NBC's Emmy winning main titles science fiction series dark skies uh fox's african-american superhero show mantis uh this the syndicated comic film adaptation the crow stairway to heaven ctv's newsroom drama eng i mean just you can just read through all this thing la law you might recognize uh life goes on lois and clark the new adventure of the superman just on and on and mortal on and on mortal combat uh, mortal, mortal combat yeah i mean unsolved mysteries unsolved that's mysteries. pretty good yeah i mean uh, this guy is it, he's franchise. legit he's not just some um, low end guy that's uh, that's not well known in hollywood this mm. is this is something major and we're going to find out what he says about this story that he had in just a second here. Well, here's the interesting thing. You talked about the mythology of the government uh, and, and some kind of symbiotic relationship with Hollywood. I don't know how extensive it's been, although there are cases that go back to the, uh, frankly, 1950, but I personally have experienced it with my Dark Skies television series co-creator, Brent Friedman. Uh, we uh, created a series called Dark Skies that aired on NBC in the 90s, at the same time The X-Files was out, I, I should tell you. And we had an incident that happened to us that I, I just have never heard anyone else have anything quite like it. This is what happened. Uh, we decided to have a Dark Skies premiere party uh, for when the show was first going to air. It was a two-hour uh, episode. It was on September 21st, 1996. And we had a party, 200 people uh, who were cast and crew and uh, the, the network executives, the studio executives, and we had it at my house. So there's that. So we have all these people coming to my house to watch the show that has not yet aired, all right? And while that was happening, uh, we were approached by a gentleman who got into our, my house a guy that got into my house, I knew everybody else, 200 people there, knew them all, didn't know this guy. And he approached Brent and myself as the co-creators of the show, said he was from the Office of Naval Intelligence, and they wanted to help us. Now, I'm going to let Brent tell a little bit more of the story now. So I'm going to pause it right there for a second, because I think this is interesting, a good setup. He knew everyone on the set. He was the producer. He had a big house, apparently. I've had bonfires in my 10 acres in California where we had 50, 60 people over, and it was a lot of people. I couldn't fit them all into my little warehouse there. I had a little metal building we had on the property. So if he had 200 people over, this guy's got a 6,000 square foot house or something humongous, right? Mm. So he's telling people that, you know, I know all these people, but this guy came in and uh, he said he was from the military. We're gonna learn in a second, I think by uh, the characteristics of who this is, uh, that they're not from the military. 
I wanted to tell you before we get into that more about Brent because we're going to talk about what Brent says. He, he's going to go into uh, his friend who was his co-producer or, or, or closely related while he was on set. Brent Friedman, this is from his uh, IMDb. He said he was born in 1962. He was a producer and writer of Dark Skies, Mortal Kombat, uh, and Star Trek Enterprise. So another pretty high up there, um, a well-known, well-known guy. He was not a man in black. He... Uh, you know, he looked like a young Republican. He looked like a young politician, right, if anything. Um, and he came up and introduced himself and uh, said that he was a big fan of the show and he loved what he had seen. And again, the show is in the middle of a broadcast, right, for the first time on television. And he's already talking about that he's seen the whole thing, which struck me as odd. Um, and as we started to have a conversation, um, he had said, yeah, I just, I was sent here by some very interested people to let you know that, um, we really appreciate what you and Bryce are doing with the show and we wanted to help. And that was my reaction. <laughs> yeah. The very face you made was my face. And, um, again, I, I can't tell you how surreal this was because I, I'm trying to like keep an eye on the party, but I'm talking to this guy and I'm. I'm very confused as to who he is and why I'm having this conversation with him, but it's kind of fascinating, so I keep talking. And I say, well, I don't, I don't understand. How do you think you can help? And he said, well, you've actually got a lot of truth in your show, but you can have a lot more if you work with myself and, and my partners. Um, we're prepared to come in and tell you some really interesting things. <laughs> That's a crazy thought I, right I, there. I think it's interesting how he approached this to begin with. Coming up to somebody and saying, you have a lot of truth, but there could be more truth, is more like you have a lot of things wrong or there's something, so let me help you correct mm. or wow. add more detail or whatever like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's interesting. We're going to get into that a little further because, and I'm going to spoil it here, but the the uh, figure that you'll find out his name is is interesting here in a second but the figure that is um interested primarily looks and is concerned with how they are portraying possession isn't that interesting so we're going to get into that a little hmm. further on but but um <laughs> it just gets weirder and weirder and weirder so here we go. Did you witness any of this? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, it's almost interesting. It would have been a great experiment to put Brent in one room and me in another room and, and have us tell the story because I can confirm all of the details. It was right? very antagonistic. Yeah. Um, and it, the meeting ultimately went nowhere. It's like, I think I, I got the sense that this guy that I met in Bryce's yard who called himself JC, that's all he would tell me about himself, um, that he was trying to broker something with this military person from the Navy. Um, they started throwing around, you know, and I don't remember the differentiation, but there was a group called the Aviary and there was a group called the Aquarium. There were different, one a Aviary was the Air Force, right. I think, and, right. and the Aquarium. So the Aquarium was trying to get the truth out and the Aviary was trying to shut it down. And so these guys, and so I, I felt that JC was trying to negotiate something with the Aquarium to get some truths and, out in television. Right. And they wanted to help us come up with some story ideas. They did not want story credit and they did not want money. So, so they didn't want anything monetary. They didn't want any credit in the film. They didn't want anything monetary. But some guy randomly appears at the, uh, the, the, the big show, the big premiere, and says, you know what, I think I can help you uh, get some truth out. And his name is JC. Right. So he's pretending to be something he's not. I think JC is some interesting letters. Letters, letters right? Right. For every story that you hear like this, which is probably a needle in a haystack, right? You've barely heard these kind of things. How mm. often does this really happen? I mean, how many times are people showing up and telling these stories? I mean, you, you hear, like when we played the, the clip um, in the anime documentary that talked about, you know, the Lion King and where the original idea of that came from. That was just a ripoff. But you hear everybody that's like, you know, in charge of Disney, like, oh, no, that's an original idea and this and that, right? How many of these ideas are actually brought by weird situations like this? Mm -hmm. Like, this is fascinating to me. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and, and what's really interesting is 
This guy's in physical form. Satan can manifest himself in physical form. I don't know if this was actually Satan, but I'm convinced it was a minion of his. It was a demonic entity that came and said, hey, look, um, this, uh, we want to help you out. And I'm going to explain that more. It's going to get even more detailed as we go further on into it. But um, this, this, is what's, this is what's happening. And it reminds me of that story I think Chris Lang told in one of his doc documentaries about um, the man, I forget his name, he went to become, uh, he wanted to do what he wanted and serve himself. And he went and played pool at this place. And a guy appeared out of nowhere and said, who do you serve? Yeah. And he said, I serve myself. He said, so be it, serve yourself. And then he said, from then on, um, his life changed. Wow. And so I, I, I'll find that clip, I'll put it in the show notes, but it's, it's, it's really interesting what's mm. going on here, how, how these things can manifest themselves physically. Mm -hmm. uh, Another thing about interesting about the aquarium. It was in the. Uh, it's not an era in aqua aquarium. That's in Aquarius. The Aquarius. 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 Yeah. Aquarius. Oh, yeah. yeah. Different yeah. than an aquarium. What do you think about that? I don't understand exactly if that's if that's a uh, entities that they're calling their navy in Australia, or if that's uh, something that he was brokeraging from what he called the Aquarius and the era, or whatever it's called. I forget what his name was. Yeah, and you know, I think they're going to sell it in whatever they're 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 masters of deception, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So you know, they're gonna they're gonna pose this as like you know we've got the truth and we're trying to get it out. And there's these people that are going to try to stop us. It's like I think listening to you know how the whole Marvel universe is really painting this picture of God is evil, and mm -hmm. you know we need to fight against him. I think they they're flipping the roles around there. So they're making a story up to try to uh, push I, an agenda. Well, I find it really interesting that if you really wanted to reach out to the public. Really, I mean, really, if you are the Navy or you're connected to the Navy, does it make any logical sense to you that you would go through a fictitious Hollywood television show <laughs> to try and get the truth out? Because you need to get the truth out. <laughs> does that make sense to you? I mean, if, if it's classified information that the Navy's not supposed to tell you, then that guy would get in trouble. Mm. But why yeah. is he going in covert? behind the door and then coming out in the way of a false like story i think i think it's really interesting because i have had um stories uh that have been shown to me from a guy named tom delong and they go into this a little further down the road but i, I don't have that packaged into this presentation but tom delong um uh, was convinced that there was a conspiracy happening with ufos and so he went to the military, he got into the Pentagon, and he said, you know what, I think uh, you guys need some help revealing this. And they said, can you write some fiction for me? Can you write some fiction for us? Because we do need to present something, and we'll help you write this. I think that's interesting, though. Because if they're asking you to write fiction, doesn't that seem like they're asking you to write a lie to try to tell the truth? Well, they, they can't, they, they, this, is the, this is their uh, explanation. I don't know if this is correct or not. I just know that they say that they can't present this stuff in factual format because it's classified. So if they have a third party, kind of like reverse engineering, right? You have a third party do uh, the presentation in fictional format, that party can say, it's fictional, I just made this up out of my head. So then it's somebody that works for the government that disagrees with them making it classified. So like a leak. Yeah. There's, mm -hmm. there's another example of that. And it's a couple of books by Malachi Martin, who was a Catholic priest and worked very closely with the Vatican and the Pope. And he wrote a book called Keys of His Blood. And he wrote another book called Windswept House. And Windswept House is written as a fictional novel. Mm -hmm. But the idea behind it is that it's based on true events. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you can't come out and say them publicly because that would get you in hot water. But if you published a novel and you change the names and all that kind of stuff, then it's like telling everybody without telling everybody. Mm. Mm. Which is, I think, what Hollywood's really good at. The devil's telling you his plan, but he's using Different. fictitious lies to yeah. do it. Like, I only take it with so much, with so much like level of trust. Right. Like, don't trust the devil. You know, it's right. like if he's telling you something. Uh, to me, right. it's like. I okay, just there's something but that, wrong with that. But that's like, my point. That's my point. If you wanted to tell the truth, you would find some way to really tell the truth. 
I, I just think using a art form that really is a master of deception to begin with, smoke and mirrors, right. to try and get your truth out, to me is like right. proving but, to you that it's like but, dirty. But it is a way to introduce an idea. And I think what Satan has been doing, like he's been doing for a long time, you know, long time. And so when you are trying to make changes in history over long periods of time, you do it a little at a time. You work mm -hmm. through generations. You like take mm -hmm. this generation, you tweak a little bit. You take this generation, you tweak a little bit. Mm -hmm. Why would you do it that way? Because the memory of the generation is only so long, mm -hmm. right? And so eventually that generation forgets or passes away. Mm -hmm. But you've introduced the change and it manifests itself in the next one. Mm -hmm. And so when you're working with humanity, and here he has been alive for you know so many thousands of years, he's able to manipulate the stream of time over, sorry. over a long period of time without necessarily look like he, he's tipped his hand, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's kind of the same, the same mm -hmm. idea with, with fiction. It's like you put it out there and people get warmed up to the idea. Right? We see this in Hollywood with all kinds of stuff. You put it out there, they get warmed up to the idea. And then when it happens, it's not so weird. Right. Or people are very accepting of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'm agreeing with you. I, I, I think that it is a, a strange thing that you would use this medium to try and reveal some kind of truth. To me, that tells me like you're a liar. Yeah, like if you just really wanted to know something, you'd see, it's like a lot of people that want to know something. It's like with the public press. So there are, there are newspapers all over the world. And you know, they actually have secure, encrypted ways of submitting information to them so that it protects the identity of the individual as a whistleblower. And then they can give the information out of the press and they're supposed to be like, let the people know, uh -huh. right? But if you're going in a different way, like if I wanted somebody to know something, it seems like that's what you do, you know, yeah. like go to the press and be like, hey, everybody needs to know this, like get it out there. Yeah. But like going to a novelist or a Hollywood mm -hmm. producer seems like a really strange way of strange. trying to re strange revealing. They're going to reveal why they're doing this uh, in this next clip. In, in particular, though, I remember one thing that irritated them. Um, we had a great... I guess storyline and, and series laid out about a, a conspiracy, mm -hmm. right? But one of the things that Brent brought to the party, uh, because he had kind of a horror film background at that point, mm -hmm. is we added this thing where the aliens were, uh, we called it the ganglion, and they would infest a person, you know, physically. Mm -hmm. And so you had ganglions coming out of people's mouths and all that. I remember they were like, that's not the way it works. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and, we were like, we don't care if that's the way it works. <laughs> yeah. It's the way it works in dark skies. Yeah, it's a but, TV show. But they were like, no, see, you're setting everything back because that's not how they really do it. So they wanted you to publish what they were saying was the truth. Yes. Yes. Yeah, see that to me. That's I'm, weird. Yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's in a weird. red flag to me. Yeah. But yeah, that is very strange that they want to deal with the topic of possession like that and, and that they would get annoyed by that. Why would the government get annoyed by how possession works? It, in a fake movie. Yeah, it doesn't movie. make sense. In a fake movie. Okay, if this, was, if this was a true leak or this was a news channel, okay, I could understand the Navy showing up and being like, no, 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 that's not really how it works. But you're talking about a fake movie where these guys could care less how it actually, actually would realistically happen in the real world. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that's pretty telling right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So check yeah. this out. I think we're going to drop into the drip here in, in a second. Drop into the drip. I mean, like, where's your credentials? Right. You know? <laughs> Anybody can say they're working for the government, talking right? talking about? <laughs> okay, let's, let's assume that's true for a moment. Why would any government agency that's presumably presiding over an intentional cover-up come to a, a TV program and try and sow it with aspects of the truth? I, because JC said to me that this is, it's a drip system, right? Like get the truth out there in small ways. And you have a television show that millions of people are watching right now. Um, some people will take it seriously. And if we start lacing it with bits of the truth, then we're preparing everybody. Preparing everybody <laughs> for what? For what? <laughs> what is going on here? I mean, this is exactly what we talk about. Yeah. And they're saying exactly what, what's going on. They said, we're preparing everyone through a drip system. Exactly what Keith was saying. Yeah. A little bit here and there, 
and then it prepares the next generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for what? Yeah. I, I, I think that these are also good examples to show you that, that, that this is a program. It's designed to program people. And like he said, there's millions of people. Some people will take it seriously. I don't think everybody walks out of the movie and is like, wow, I really believe in this stuff. You know what I mean? But some people actually will. Yeah. Or it goes into the subconscious and, and you know, 90% of what we do all day long is, is from our subconscious, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I think this is very telling. I mean, how many times have you quoted a movie and you'd be like, oh yeah, that happened. Oh, by the way, da 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 Where'd that come from? Right. Mm. Well, that was set in your subconscious by the last movie you saw. So I can't tell you how many times when I was in sixth grade, what's interesting is when I, I was in sixth grade in 1996, when this TV show was airing, uh, uh, we, uh, kids would come into our classroom and they would be like, uh, da, 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 quote, 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 from Saturday Night Live. Now, I hadn't seen Saturday Night Live. My parents wouldn't let me watch it. I don't know if it came on too late or they were just, just like, let's not let them watch that or whatever. But uh, I, I can remember just laughing to myself going, what are they talking about? I have no idea. But the rest of the kids in the classroom were laughing about some quote or something that happened on, on the TV. And they would look at me and they would laugh and laugh and laugh, not at me, but just because they thought it was so funny. And some of it was kind of vulgar. <laughs> so I was, I, was, I was at a loss, but it shows you that not only do us as adults become influenced by this, but our kids do That's right. drastically. That's right. So it's something to be aware of that this is seeding, subtly seeding the minds. And the spiritual realm was coming to these guys saying, you have some truth and we want to help you push our agenda. Yeah. There would be no reason logically for these guys to make this story up. Really, there would not be. You know what I mean? Yeah, and really especially good. this level of detail as well. So, you know, the fact that something like this did happen, you know, raises, should raise a lot of question marks in your mind. Mm -hmm. So what is Dark Skies? Because this is the video that they were making. So I looked it up on IMDb. Dark Skies is uh, in, uh, set in the 1960s, America, as a young couple struggles to expose the truth about a hidden alien invasion while a secret government organization follows its own agenda in dealing with the threat. So it's, it's your typical alien, you know, uh, conspiracy uh, documentary or, or TV series, fiction TV series, right? Yes, but do you find this kind of very interesting that that's exactly what's going on in real life? Mm. I mean, they're trying to expose some alien stuff and then there's some government agent that's following their every move. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think that's kind of interesting. Mm. And he says, you have a lot of truth in this and we can help you expose it. Why is the devil so interested in an alien fictional video? Right. Let's, let's find out. Do you remember Roger Murnau? Mm -hmm. Roger Murnau is a, um, a, he was an occultist turned Christian when his coworkers brought him to Christ. Let's see what he says about the future as uh, his priest, his satanic priest told him about what's gonna happen with this agenda. I think this is fascinating. And he said, it's gonna be done in a unique manner. This, this grand plan says is, is gonna take people, people are gonna eat the stuff because it says spirits, demon spirits will declare themselves to be inhabitants of far distant planets in the galaxies that are coming to warn the inhabitants of planet Earth of the impending destruction of the planet unless something seriously proper is done to avoid it. So I think what's interesting is all these things, especially this clip right here, is the military showing actual uh, evidence that they have with their military craft of things that are appearing on their radars, on, to, visually to their pilots, every day. There's a, a pilot that says this is happening daily and they're not sure why. They want to get it out of their uh, no-fly zones. They want to get it out of their, um, their, their, their systems. They, sh they, they tried to get, get, it out, get rid of it and they can't get rid of it. And they said, it flies faster than our jets. It's whatever it is, they said, it is a major nuisance to us. And what's interesting is these things aren't like little crafts. They're giant glowing orbs or they appear as tic-tac or metal round balls. Right. So when did this Roger Minow video come out? So, okay. So this video that we just, this clip that we just saw was, was back in the, what is it? The nineties? The, the Early nineties. Yeah. It was, it was a while back that he recorded this, but when he actually had this experience, 
was back in the the 60s it was back it was a long time ago interesting and so this this happened with his uh satanic priest or whatnot he had him tell him what was the plan for the future according to the spirits because the satanic priest openly said he's op they're worshiping lucifer and that all these all these demons are are um are are, are presenting themselves to them so they can be uh, uh worshiped in front on the altar wow and so so they said this is how it's going to happen it's going to be very strange how this is all going to uh, all this manifestations and right now we are seeing this exact exact thing happen yeah, you know, you mentioned that also the shape of these these things. Um, I've I've heard them described as clear balls, with like this square yep. um, cube, cubed like metallic cube or something like that mm -hmm. in the middle of this thing. Um, also, you talked about the pill shaped one mm -hmm. um, where it was like you know a long cylinder. I think I think they're large, right? Yeah, they're not small oh, 40 items. Forty feet. Yeah, they're huge. Yeah, they're very large. And, and I saw a video one time that was talking about how it, how it was flying, the pattern that was flying. And it would fly at like 1,600 miles an hour, I think, in an S format, just, just racing yeah. through Earth. Nobody could be inside of this thing. I mean, you would just blat against the wall, you know. So yeah, whatever the, this is, mm -hmm. is, is either spiritual or there's something absolutely crazy going I think, on. I think uh, you can handle about six to eight G-forces. Yeah. I mean, you go on, on YouTube and watch these pilots as they're going through this, and they're like... I mean, yeah. they're stressed. Yeah. Passing out. Passing you know, out, yeah. yeah. And that's what they train them to do so that if you do go through these G-forces that you're not going to pass out. While you just, these things are going like 80 times, those G-forces, going around in circles, and they are definitely not human, yeah. right? So I think what's interesting is the devil's very interested in this, this uh, demonic alien agenda. And I think it's been devised, or, or uh, devi um, I think it's been... Uh, created, intrinsically designed, so that it's difficult to talk about it without having some stigma mm. on it, right? Mm. And so let's let's go back to the documentary to see what these guys are actually saying about it, as they uh, are Hollywood producers, and uh, because they're they're trying to figure it out too, they're scratching their heads, not sure what's happening, but we know what's happening. Second Thessalonians two nine through eleven says, "The coming of the lawless one is an according it is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders." and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So what this verse is saying here is that there will be a huge deception that's coming. And not only just a little deception, but it's going to be a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And God will allow this to happen to separate the good and the bad, the righteous and the unrighteous. And it will begin the process before Satan reveals himself in the final days. Because that's what he wants to do. He wants to be worshipped, right? I want to interject something on this, on this one thought um, that you just presented here, though. Um, God is not going to allow a strong delusion without giving you the tools to be able to make it through that delusion. Right. And that's why it's really important to know what the Bible says, to know what the state of the dead is, mm -hmm. to know about spiritualism. There's a few things that God has given us ample amount of information to the point that we should not have an excuse. Right. We should not be like, hey, sorry, I didn't know. There's like this alien showed up and blah, blah, blah. You know, God's given you plenty of evidence in the Bible what these things potentially are or actually are, and we should not be deceived. The, the rub here, and I think, you know, people get hung up on this. They're like, man, God, God's, God's sending them a delusion. Like, why would God do that? But if you look at the text, you, I think the biggest clue is the last couple of words. When it says they did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness, that person is making a choice. Mm -hmm. And they, their mind and heart is, is sold out to things that are not um, biblical, not godly. And they're saying, I want that more than I want the things of God. And because their mind is put in that condition, they're not able to see the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, God allows many things to happen. One of those is a strong delusion. But it's like if you, if your mind hasn't been fortified with Scripture, if your mind and heart are not completely with God, then it's easy to be deceived. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So, so Ross, just to be clear, they were they were on board with the alien invasion aspect of it. They just were not on board with us telling it as a horror story. Yeah. They, they had they had issues with that. And and to answer your your question, which is a really excellent one, it, it's as, as Brent said, they were looking at a disclosure scenario. How how ultimately does this secret become known to the public? And they said to us that you know pretty much what Brent said earlier, you just can't, the president can't come out and say, by the way, here's everything and, right. and all at once. So they wanted to see more of the truth through fiction. And in fact, uh, that which was exactly what our show was doing. We literally told people in our sales materials when we sold the series that we had been approached to tell the story, the true story uh, under the cover of fiction. Under the cover of fiction. So. I think it's interesting. You said while we were watching this, why not? Why can't why can't the government? They're still thinking it's the government that's coming to them and trying to get them to to do stuff. It's not the government. It's a lie. It's satanic beings presenting themselves as government beings so they listen to them. The government could come out and tell us all about this stuff, but they still can't figure out what's going on with this right. stuff. Right. The fact that these guys don't know what's going on when you ask them, what is this? They don't know. When you look at the guys that are literally flying around in, in the fighter jets and they're seeing these things and they're asking them, what is this? They're going, we don't know. We don't know. You hear that over and over and over again. It's really from a Christian perspective that we go, we, we know what this is. Yeah. You know, so I, I think even them, it's like, it's easy to get deceived if you just don't even have that Christian, like, backing up and looking at the big picture. There are other beings that are here. They are fallen beings. The fact that they would be upset at the way that we portray possession, you know I mean? These are all like letting them know who these beings are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We just read a verse in the Bible that says that with Satan has all power mm -hmm. to deceive and lie and do those signs. So my question is, how much power has Satan? Yeah. Well, only as much as God will give him, right? Mm. But I mean, he's been around for thousands of years. He's much more uh, capable. I mean, if he can go and, and, and move, maneuver like this stuff, his, his physical being is not like our weak bodies. Right. I mean, it, 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 they, the angels are higher than humanity. Yeah. Can, can I answer that question, though, directly? Yeah. How much power does Satan have? As much power as you let him have. Mm. Ah, that's yeah. it. Literally. He's not sticking a gun to your head and forcing you. Choice. When we are deceived, it's because we are allowing that deception yep. into our life. If we actually hungered and thirst, like the verse said, after righteousness and after the truth, we would not be deceived. Mm -hmm. Amen. 100%. So he has no power mm -hmm. over you if you're hungry for the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's check out this next clip. One of the things that I will tell you that happened is that uh, when you shoot a pilot, uh, in, in the U.S. for the for television, uh, lots of people actually are part of the process to make the pilot, but they don't all get to see it. All right. So this guy, when he showed up at my house the night of the premiere party, said he had seen the pilot. And me, kind of being, you know, uh, well, a, a skeptic like yourself, I said, "Oh yeah. Well, what happens after a lone guard sees the crop circle?" which I thought, well, that ought to smoke him out pretty good. And the guy said, oh, yeah, well, that's where they go back to the Majestic 12 headquarters and they, they, they perform the surgery, which is exactly what happens in the series. And keep in mind, so do you think he was actually saying that some yet. of, do you think he was saying that some of what you were putting in your program was actually true, yes. even though you and Brent had just made this stuff up? That's exactly what he said. He said uh, that they had seen our pilot and uh, they obviously had, had had, I mean, they had seen the pilot and that they thought it was very good. And they, I guess they thought there would be the drip, drip, drip of disclosure. And the, we were part of telling the truth under the cover of fiction, which was kind of the, the, the way that we sold the Dark Skies series in the first place. So I, I guess what this fellow was saying is, uh, we think there are some things that you could put into your show that would be even more helpful. Now to that, I said, I'm a Hollywood producer, as you just pointed out. I really don't want guys from O&I giving me ideas. They're not gonna be in our TV series or whatever. O&I is like the CIA of Australia, apparently. I looked it up, it, was, it, was, it had something to do with, with that 
intelligence agency. So just to tell you what he was saying, I don't want O and I because he still thinks it's 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 government that's talking to him. I don't want O and I in here. I, I want to just tell my story. Right. So I, I also find it really interesting that um, um, this guy is coming to him and he's trying to prove that he is either aware of the whole thing, right? What do you think he's actually really doing? Psychologically, he's trying to win their, their oh wow, this guy must really know what's going on, right? Well, do you think the demons are around when they're filming the thing? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, the, can they communicate with each other and tell each other like, mm. oh yeah, this is what happens in the story. No problem. There's probably a guy sitting right off of over here that's telling him what to say mm. or whatever, mm. or maybe he was the guy that was present when mm. they were filming it. Mm. That's how the demonic world works. But him throwing that comment out there to him is going to make him think that's impossible. Nobody else has seen that. So yeah. now he's going to believe what he says right. or trust him. But I'm, call, I'm calling this like, this is straight demonic. Yeah, mm. yeah, I 100% agree. Uh, one of the things in the Dark Skies series is there is a ganglion that kind of infests somebody's head and then it gets out of their head. That's what bothered them, uh, Ross. They said, well, that's not the way it works. And I said, well, I don't care how it works. This is a TV series. You know, we're, we, we, it's drama. We make things up. And he goes, yeah, but, you know, that one, it's just not quite the way it works. You could do better on that. And he was, and just like what he said before, I, he wanted to reiterate this in the documentary. And I thought it was, a, it was a good thing to reiterate because he's going back to being focusing on the, uh, the possession of things. Why would the government want to do that? So I, 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 I'm, I'm just floored at this whole interview. And they kind of end it right there and kind of just stop and, and, and wonder, uh, we don't really know what's going on, but eh, we made the series anyway. Yeah, that's why I think it's important to discuss this topic. Um, I, I really do see the value in seeing the spiritualism that's attached to something like this. I think there's gonna be a lot of people that are caught off guard because what they're dealing with is something physical, something that you're gonna physically see, you're gonna see with your eyeballs, you're gonna see on television, you're gonna see like whatever. And this is just getting more and more complicated. I don't think we've even seen the beginning of this thing. Right. Um, and all of a sudden it's like they put out enough of this dripped information, people are gonna to start to believe it. You watch. Right, yeah, and that's, and, and, and in fact, I think Mikey and I are gonna go out on the street and do some, do some interviews, do some polling with mm. some of the areas around. We've actually decided we're not only gonna do polling on the bridge random people in the park, like we've done in the past for other, other producers, but we're also going to be doing uh, polling from people coming out of churches in the city yeah. and seeing what people believe mm -hmm. about this possibility of, you know, extraterrestrial life out there. That's a good idea. When Mikey and I went and did it originally for the first documentary that we made, um, the, the interesting thing that, that came out of that kind of like talking with people, I was actually shocked at how many people even believed in aliens or had some sort of alien exposure. But when we asked them at the end of our talking, you know, like, do you believe in aliens? And pretty much everyone said yes. And we said like, you know, are you, are you Christian? Yes, 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 yes. And it was just like, wow. wow. Or they believed in God or something like this. And so you can see real quick how even the Christian world is, is, is going to get deceived if they don't have the correct picture. Absolutely. Hollywood has always, no matter if it's, if it's a, um, a Hallmark movie or if it's just your, your Disney or if it's the natural Hollywood or Marvel or whatever you have, they've always, always liked playing and titillating on the idea of, hey, is this good? But actually it's bad. And is this bad? Well, actually it's good. And they mix that in your mind so you're confused. Mm -hmm. and, and then they present that as, as a good movie. And so this, what you're saying is absolutely right. That, that's, that's what's happening. It's, it's, it's messing with people's minds. Yeah. I want to thank you for watching this program. This is a fantastic program and we can't do it without our Patreons. Thank you, every single one of you. We can't do it without you. And uh, if you would like to also contribute, please go to patreon.com slash Little Light Studios and uh, help us as we continue to go through the Bible and see exactly what's going on in society. God bless you. Little Life Studios is a faith-based media ministry with a passion for today's youth. By God's grace, our videos have been circulating YouTube and reaching thousands of people. I mean, seriously, thousands of people. As the popularity of our videos began to rise, we realized a problem. 
What about the countries that don't speak English? We heard your request and having an answer by creating Little Life Studios International. This YouTube channel is assigned to be a hub for people to enjoy Little Life Studios production in their own native tongue. A big thank you to all the volunteers who have helped us with translation, voiceovers, and editing. We encourage you to utilize this source by subscribing and sharing our videos with your friends and family. Welcome to the Video Bible Study Series where we will explore a variety of Bible topics using video and print. What is humility? Do we need God's law? Can I understand the Holy Spirit? Yes, you can, and we're gonna solve that today in five minutes or less. They're designed to engage you by watching a five minute video, having a discussion on the topic, and diving deeper into it with a lesson study. Each study asks questions, has discussion points, and or has activities. Overall, we developed this project for you to have a closer walk with Jesus as you explore relevant topics, either in a group setting or on your own. We hope you find these a blessing. If you want more information, go to www.littlelightstudios.tv or find us on your favorite social media platform.